sunrise over the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta, a place unlike any other in California. The Delta is both an integral part of the past and the foundation for our future, home to an important ecosystem and legacy communities that have been around since the 1800s, a place that is important to the state's economy, water supply, and quality of life for millions of Californians. The Delta has been described as probably the most important piece of geography in California because it is a huge part of the water supply, because it has this unique ecosystem. Although highly altered, it is unique. California's two longest in-state rivers, the Sacramento and the San Joaquin, meet to form this inland delta, mixing with salt water from the San Francisco Bay and the Pacific Ocean. It is a vast maze of waterways, with roughly 1,100 miles of levees, 700 miles of sloughs and channels, and 57 islands. These areas were populated from the earliest days of our state. This river right off of where we're standing was the main highway to get people from San Francisco to either Sacramento or Stockton. Those were the places where people disembarked for the gold fields. So this region has incredible gold rush history. It dates back to the earliest part of California. Often called the hub of California's water supply, water that flows through the Delta watershed serves nearly 30 million people in the Bay Area, the Central Valley, Central Coast, and Southern California, accounting for nearly a third of Southern California's water supply. The Delta watershed provides water to nearly 6 million acres of highly productive farmland, irrigating nearly half of the fruits and vegetables produced in the U.S. The land here has been farmed for generations, from potatoes, asparagus, corn, and alfalfa, to orchards, and now vineyards. This is really one of the first agricultural regions in the state, incredibly fertile and productive. Rich, rich soil formed over millennia. The Delta provides access to the Port of Stockton, a major inland port moving nearly five million tons of cargo. It is also a recreation destination, and it has a valuable, diverse ecosystem part of the West Coast's largest estuary, supporting 80% of the state's salmon fisheries and part of the Pacific Flyway for migration of many bird species. And in 2019, the Delta was designated as a National Heritage Area, the first in California. There are people here who have been here generations that have built communities. It's a place where people live and work and recreate. And we feel like we have a great story to tell here in the Delta, not only a historical story, but also a modern story about the role this region plays in the water issues that we're confronting in the state. Certainly it's setting in Northern California kind of in between some large uh, metropolitan areas, and yet it still managed to maintain a lot of historic character even in spite of that. This place is very unique. It's a great place, but it has problems. For over 50 years, the challenges have grown. How to balance the needs of local Delta communities, the state's economy, a reliable water supply for two-thirds of Californians, and a healthy ecosystem. Addressing those needs requires a comprehensive solution, diversifying the state's water portfolio, and updating Delta water infrastructure while balancing the interests of the local Delta communities. But it's clear status quo in the Delta is not an option. No one is happy. The, the, the ecosystem's not doing well. We're not getting the deliveries in the water system that we, we'd like to get. No one is happy. It's not functioning well for anybody. The critical thing that is too often missed in the Delta is the Delta is not sustainable in its current form. This narrow winding channel is one of the few remaining places that resemble the historic Delta as it once was. So if we go back just 150 years, this place was three to 400,000 acres of very wild wetlands and riparian forests and rivers and channels. So over 5,000 miles of waterways, wildlife, salmon that were five feet long, grizzly bears and elk and beaver, it was just a tremendously wild place. Supposedly, the sky would turn black with birds. In the mid-1800s, early settlers began reshaping the landscape, 
Chinese laborers built the first levees by hand to reclaim the lands for agriculture. When clamshell dredges were invented at the turn of the century, the land changed even more quickly. The levee building was really there to protect agriculture in the beginning. Levees today protect highways as well as towns, infrastructure, and some of the levees are important to protecting water supply reliability. The Sacramento River in the Western Delta was once so narrow, early explorers had trouble finding the entrance. Over the years, the channel has been widened almost a mile across. Sand dunes near Rio Vista are the remnants of 20 plus years of dredging, literally 24 seven, 365 days a year with millions of tons of material taken out of the channels. Due to land use decisions and actions by humans, this is one small part of what's become the highly altered delta we see today. Over the last 150 years, we have levied and drained and removed about 98% of this former wetland and riparian forest that used to exist in the delta. So for somebody who was here 150 years ago to come would not recognize this place today. That transformation has taken its toll on the ecosystem. The robust habitat and food web that native species evolved in are nearly gone, and many fish populations are in decline. From an ecological perspective, this is a canal system. It's a system of conveyance canals. We're trying to do a lot of things to these canals, but they are not functionally habitats. There's very little habitat actually here. The reason people care is the water they get comes from this place. And the major constraints on the water they get are ecosystem constraints right now. Getting this ecosystem revved up should be of interest to anybody because their water supply depends on it. It is inevitable. The Delta as we know it is constantly changing. And that will continue, whether by climate change, earthquakes, or other factors, forces will permanently alter this place and the benefits it provides to the region and all of California. The three S's, I like to say, so we got subsidence and sea level rise and seismic are the three S's, the big drivers of change. Due to reclamation of the islands and farming practices over the years to dewater the saturated soils, the Delta's peat soils are rapidly oxidizing, vaporizing, causing a phenomenon known as subsidence that is, the land surface is dropping as these highly organic soils oxidize into the atmosphere. One way to get a visual image of that is that the Delta is losing about 2,300 dump truck loads of dirt every single day. This spot near Owl Harbor paints a dramatic picture of subsidence. Water is 20 to 30 feet above the farmland on the right. That farmland is below sea level. And of course, that's been having an impact on the levees because the levees are having to hold back more water, if you will, and they're making them more vulnerable to earthquakes and sea level rise. We've seen the Delta experience levee failures over time, including the 2004 Jones Tract failure at this spot that cost $90 million by some estimates to repair and pump out the water that came rushing in. There are several state efforts to address subsidence that will help reduce the pressures on levees into the future. Sea levels in the Delta have been gradually rising for thousands of years. Some climate change models forecast potentially severe widespread impacts, which could include permanent flooding and significant salinity intrusion. We're here in Liberty Island, and the consequences of a flooded island, you can see a large expanse of water here. And if we continue down the path we're currently continuing, uh, we may see more of these kinds of flooded islands in the Delta. Increased salinity in the delta is a major issue. It can be caused by rising sea levels, a changing landscape, or the loss of particular islands. Without action, both the state's water supply and the delta's ecosystem could suffer. And then there is the ever-present danger of an earthquake. It could cause widespread levee failures with massive amounts of salt water rushing in from the San Francisco Bay Experts say this could shut down or limit access to this vital water supply for much of California for an extended period of time, months, even possibly years. When we do get the big earthquake, not if but when, that rush of salinity into the delta happens very rapidly 
and in a matter of a couple days, uh, most of the delta, certainly the central and southern part of the delta become quite salty. It becomes unusable for water supplies for two-thirds of the state's resident that get some or all of their water. So Bay Area, Central Valley, Southern California, that will be lost as a water supply. Depending on how fast we can restore that, maybe for a considerable period of time. The need for action is high because every day that goes by, the delta is continuing to sink lower and lower. Every day that goes by, seas are rising a little bit more and more. And every day that goes by, the faults are gaining additional strain before they break. And so these risks are increasing every day we delay. We're in a marsh, but this is a special marsh. This is a marsh that essentially existed historically. Across thousands of acres, innovative and science-based projects are underway to restore some historic delta habitat and ecosystem process, like this Thule Marsh, a critical component of reversing the decline of the ecosystem and providing a more robust food web to boost endangered fish populations. It's a dendritic marsh system, and the important thing about a dendritic system is there's this branching network of channels that goes out into the marsh, and when the high tides come in, the water goes everywhere. It saturates the marsh, and then it comes back, bringing food with it. Food for fish. Scientists are studying the important role the tides play, providing new insight into how the entire ecosystem works. Insight that will help guide our actions moving into the future. If your cooler fell overboard somewhere in the system, in the Western Delta, it will travel eight miles in six hours. It'll turn around and it'll go eight miles back the other way. That's not a river. That doesn't function like a river. We need to get the tides that are working in our favor to help move the fish food, the fish like, from the marshes into the channels where it becomes available for them to consume. Habitat restoration alone won't fix all that ails the delta. Advances in science and technology are improving our understanding of climate change, seismic activity, ecosystem functions, and levee conditions. These advances are helping to identify new ways to update the outdated and aging infrastructure that moves water through the delta while supporting the ecosystem. Public water agencies are helping to fund many of these projects, along with investments by the state and conservation organizations. This infrastructure was built in a time when California had a lot fewer people, and we didn't know much about the Delta ecosystem. We know a lot more about the ecosystem today, and we have a lot more people in this state. California's population has more than doubled since 1960, when voters approved the state water project. It was built to bring water from Lake Oroville in the north, through the Delta, and onto Castaic Lake in Lake Paris in Southern California. That water is received by 29 long-term state water supply contractors who distribute it to farms, homes, and industry. The Metropolitan Water District of Southern California is the largest contractor on the state water project, which provides about 30% of Southern California's water. Improving the Delta conveyance system would separate the water supply from the ecosystem during important times for fish. In order to modernize this very antiquated system, we need to be really smart, but what we think should happen is we gotta isolate the delta from these water supply intakes. New Delta conveyance will ensure the reliable delivery of water supplies to much of the state, and at the same time, restore ecosystem functions that support native fish species. It will guard against climate change impacts, improve export water quality, and protect billions of dollars of investments made by Californians. We're asking the Delta to be all things to all people all the time, and it can't do that. So if we separate the water supply, move it around the Delta, it's better for the ecosystem, it's better for water quality, it reduces greatly the seismic risk, and reduces, almost eliminates sea level rise impacts. place with many competing interests, change in the Delta has been slow to come. A solution requires all Californians to come together. It's critical for the future of California's water supply, for the future of the state itself. We need to get back to a sustainable Delta, 
one that can withstand rising seas, earthquakes, get away from islands subsiding, and restore habitat to some semblance of what it used to be in the delta. Then we also need to have a reliable water supply so we can have a healthy California economy, a healthy economy for the United States. We need to work on solutions that move the Delta forward instead of backwards so that our kids and grandkids and great-grandkids can enjoy a Delta that is going to persist into the future.